All right, folks, I needed to get this video out because we have some additional footage for Tears of the Kingdom that was not present in the Nintendo Direct yesterday. And, we're, and no, we're not talking about a trailer that was 2 minutes and 21 seconds versus 2 minutes and 18 seconds. That turned out to not really have any additional footage in that extended one they put in a different place. It was just a difference in how they presented the logos and the end of each thing. But here's the deal. The Japanese website has been updated, and through that update, there has been some brand new footage. And also over the last day, we have gotten a whole bunch of new screenshots, many of which were never present in the trailer. We also have some brand new official art. And you know what? To get over my frustration and how the collector's edition has been handled today, this is exactly what I needed, some additional stuff to share with all of you. So I'm just sharing this stuff right now. First off, here's the footage. And, you know, I'm just going to kind of talk because there's no music or anything attached to this footage as it's just, you know, straight ripped off their website. But we'll also throw up all the images as we go here. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about my thoughts on Tears of the Kingdom right now after that trailer. First off, for me personally, that trailer was exactly what I needed. It was almost all essentially new. New, 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 new. And that is what I needed to see was just what new stuff. Hyrule itself, even though I recognize some of the locations, still looks completely refreshed all over again. There's so many changes to the landscape. So that was one thing that was really nice to get confirmed here with how much we saw. Obviously, we also have a much greater variety of enemies. It looks like maybe all of the old enemies are back. I know we haven't seen if Lionels are back and stuff like that. I don't think we've even seen Stalfos yet. But either way, it does look like we have most of the old enemies back with updated looks. But we have additional ones as well. There's a scene where it looks like we might have a re-dead back. We have, we have a three-headed dragon and so many more. We have other Zelda enemies coming back. We have brand new ones, like whatever that uh, box-shaped crazy thing was that, that Link was fighting up in the sky. There's just a lot of new, and I think this is what we needed. Now, we're going to see more. There's going to be more trailers before launch, at least a launch trailer, right? More screenshots, maybe even more official art updates, and... The official art was obviously interesting. I don't know if I'm showing it right now, but you'll see it eventually here where Z uh, Zelda has the Sheikah Slate. Like, we know for the first time that Zelda, you know, has it and looks like she's using it in the art. What she's using it for, we don't know, but that's a thing. And my mind's just running wild with some of the story stuff. Naturally, Ganondorf's voice. I really thought they nailed Ganondorf's voice in the English version. I don't know if you guys like it, but I definitely enjoyed it. And it was very ominous and foreboding and threatening. Uh, just from this trailer alone, combined, obviously, with the fact that he's like a dead zombie. I don't know what Ganondorf has got going on right now. He's trying to reincarnate? I'm not sure. But he looks super, super powerful in a way I've never really felt that Ganon slash Ganondorf ever really was. We're always told how powerful he is, but he always kind of seems like a joke. And... The thing that gets me is how Zelda herself actually doubts that Link can do it. In Breath of the Wild, the consistent theme was that, hey, you're our only hope. We need you, Link. You can do this. And Zelda really never gave up on Link's ability to save the day in the end. But here we have Zelda saying out loud that, I don't think you can do this, Link. I don't. I, I, this is even too much for you. And we've never had that sort of doubt instilled in us by Zelda before. So it's really captivating to me to think that this game is trying to set it up as if we are facing the height of Ganon slash Ganondorf's power in a way never seen in any prior Zelda game. And that it's not a for sure thing that Link's going to win. Now we obviously know... Most Zelda games are going to end with us winning, but it's still one of those situations where the game's at least trying to set it up and put doubt in the player's head by having Zelda herself doubt that Link can actually stop anything. And there's some emotional scenes as well in this. Obviously, since I saw the trailer and I'm now seeing it over a hundred times, it does look to me like there is at least a possibility that Zelda either dies or sacrifices herself. This is not, I'm not alone in this thinking. Some people obviously dis massively disagree, and that's fine. We all have our personal opinions on it. But I do think there is something to be said about some of the words Zelda says. Oh, she doubts Link can do it, or, you know, lend him my power, 
Why are we lending someone power? Why are we taking power away from Zelda, who was able to hold Calamity Ganon at bay all on her own? What are we talking about? Well, maybe Zelda's about to die, and the only thing keeping her alive is her power, and she's telling Hylia or somebody else to give Link her power because that's the only shot Hyrule's got. I it, it, it It's just emotional. We see Link jumping to try to save her at the end of the trailer. What's going to happen there? Is Link going to even be able to successfully pull off saving her? Is he going to get a hold of her? And then, you know, she realizes that Link doesn't have the ability to save them because of the, her weight or whatever the case is. Like, say he busts out the sail club, but he keeps sinking down because there's too much weight. And then Zelda's like, nope, I'm, I've got to sacrifice myself. Please lend him my power and then let's go of his hand. Um, that could just be a deeply emotional moment. Obviously, we don't know that that's going to happen, but that is a possibility that it could happen. So I'm, I'm very curious about a lot of aspects of this game. And obviously, I love that it's very clear the marketing campaigns we get, not just the pre-orders. And I know there's some debate over the $70 price and the collector's edition stuff that I'm a little bit upset about today. But in the end, we're, we're getting new stuff every day. I said we would get new stuff almost daily, if not weekly, at you know at at the at the latest about this game. So we're gonna have news about this game nonstop for a while. And I'm gonna be all on top of it. If you don't need any more information, I just don't watch my Tears of the Kingdom videos. But I, it's going to be very, very fascinating to me. Obviously, after the show yesterday, we got a bunch of updates and screenshots. Today, we got even more additional official art that we had previously not had. And obviously, this extended footage with the Japanese website update today. And who knows what we're going to have tomorrow? Who knows what we're going to have next week? There's going to be new stuff coming up about this game all the time. You might start to feel like maybe they're overdoing it, but I want to remind you that Breath of the Wild was a several hours long game if you wanted, or you know, several hundred hours long game if you wanted to do everything. And no matter what they show for Tears of the Kingdom, we're likely going to end up seeing less than 2 to 5% of what this game actually is, no matter how much they show before launch. So that's really crazy. Also, I wanted to give you guys a little update on my launch plans for the game. I am currently in the process of debating on purchasing a digital copy from Australia so I could end up playing the game early for you guys. I could start streaming uh, way earlier in the day on the Thursday and then keep that stream going through Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, some people worry about my ability to buy the DLC or whatever. Don't worry about that. If I got to buy an Australian DLC, that doesn't really bother me. But I will have a physical copy in the U.S. as well for this. And we'll see if I buy a digital copy in the U.S. as well and see if my save file can transfer. It's a region free. Switch is region free. So in theory... I should be able to use my same save file from the Australian copy on the U.S. copy. That shouldn't really matter. That's the beauty of region free. But we'll have to find out. Basically, I'll just I'll, I'll test it. I'll, I'll do a, a cloud save backup of the Australian uh, save on my main account. Because I'm going to still play it on my main account. And then I will basically delete my Australian account off of it. Go buy it digitally on the eShop and then see if my save file still works. If it doesn't, well, whatever. If I have to end up, oh, no, I might have to restart my save file a day later. Oh, no, what am I going to do? Here's the thing. If it's anything like Breath of the Wild, restarting it won't even be that big a deal. I can just take a different path. I can go a different direction. I can discover something else. So even restarting a day later isn't really that big a deal to me if I want to. But it does look like I'm going to be streaming it the, the Thursday on May 11th, Friday, May 12th. Saturday and Sunday. In fact, I'll probably end up streaming it every single day through the uh, following week as well. Whether or not I get extra videos out or not, we'll see. I plan to get videos out while doing it. So, like, well, you know, it's good. <laughs> this is my most anticipated game of all time, guys. Anyways, then you guys saw the extended footage probably a couple of times along with a whole bunch of screenshots and official art. You guys are amazing and awesome. Thank you for being here. I'll catch all of you guys on a live stream a little bit later tonight. Peace out.